well as uh, uh, may the force be with you plus one uh, so and overall the month of may so um, I am going to share, uh, just for reference, uh, uh, the agenda uh, in the chat, uh, so we can uh, kind of have a, a, a guiding um, uh, thread. Uh, but I, as usual, I do want to ask uh, if uh, we have newcomers who want to introduce themselves or uh, first time they uh, are participating to the community call. Hey everyone, I'm Theo from the Radical uh, Protocol and very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you Theo um, and I uh, and, uh, can't wait to uh, hear more about the Radical NFT that you're working on. Um, is anybody else a uh, first, uh, first newcomer to the call? Yeah, it's Hi. my time as well. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You can Sorry, go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead, please. Okay. Um, so I'm also a newcomer and I'm studying at Mannheim University. I'm doing a sociology master's. I'm taking Stefano's uh, course, Blockchain Economics and Radical Markets. And he recommended that I join. So um, I'm pretty new to the topic, but I'm also really interested. It's very nice to meet all of you. Nice to meet you, Melike. Thanks for being here. Stefan, your turn. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's my first call as well. I'm with TO uh, on the Radical Protocol, a co-founder. I specialize in front-end and I'm the front-end lead for the project. So yeah, I think the TO will, will explain something in more detail about the project and looking forward to this call and hearing all of you guys. Thanks, thank you for joining. Is PO an acronym for something? No, simple. No, it's CO. It's uh, it's not uh, uh, TO or it's it's not T T O. It's CO. Yeah, CO like uh, CO. Well, TO in French. Can Can you say the whole word if it stands for something, please? No, it's his name. It's his name. It's uh, TO is his name. CO. Oh, the name of CO. Sorry. No problem. All right. Anybody else is a is a newcomer today? Hello, I'm 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 new. Hi. Hi. Um, I guess I'll do my camera. I'm Christina. I've talked to Fanny before on the phone. Yes. Um, I live in South Florida, and I work for a, a software development agency. So I see a lot of like a lot of fads come and go. Um, and it seems like this one is sticking around. So here I am. Um, I'm also putting on a digital art competition based in South Florida to feature local artists with this local science museum. Super, uh, and uh, I'm sure we'll have time to uh, to talk about it. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining. It's good to uh, good to see you uh, as well. Anybody else? Hello. Hey. Um, I am from uh, Radical Exchange Bangalore, so definitely not new, new, but definitely not a regular to these calls either. So just thought, thought I'd jump in and say hi. Hi, Anoush. Very good to, uh, to see you uh, uh, here. Uh... Kimberly? Also, yes, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. also a uh, uh, first time on a community call. Um, Kimberly, I'm in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. Um, come from a background of doing, you know, kind of like old, old fashioned in person on the ground um, community organizing around policy change, specifically getting big money out of politics. Um, and through that met with Aaron Soskin, the founder of Govern. Um, so and he's, you know, looped me into DAOs and blockchain and, um, you know, kind of being introduced to this space and, and finding it exciting. So glad to be here. Very nice. Um, um, they, Aaron was um, uh, part of the last uh, call, uh, community call to uh, uh, to present Govern, which is a project that was um, actually worked on during the first uh, uh, Radical Exchange Fellowship uh, program, which was a pleasure to uh, to work with uh, with the team. And... All right. 
Great. Well, we have a new, uh, a lot of uh, of new people, and um, and I don't want to put anybody on the spot. So if you just want to say hi in the, on the chat, um, you know, like this is um, uh, absolutely uh, up up to you. Uh, and uh, and so for everybody, before we start, like we we do these calls like once a month, um, uh, a little bit as a um, as a touch point with uh, the community, like trying to give um, like. Um, updates uh, from the chapters uh, that we have all around the world and uh, the community and the foundation. And every time we uh, also focus on a, uh, on a um, specific like subject uh, to also uh, kind of direct a little bit uh, uh, in, you know, the talk, the calls um, uh, into one direction because there's so many subjects that uh, we tackle that it's otherwise goes a little bit or like you know, too many things to cover in one hour. So, and today we're gonna uh, actually uh, speak uh, about uh, DAOs uh, and DAOs as in um, decentralized autonomous uh, organizations. Um, and um, I think, I mean, I don't know what, what do you think? Uh, should we go ahead with the meat of the subject or, uh, or do some updates first? Your choice today. Uh, I think we can just jump in. Um... Yeah. Cool. All right. So um, raise your hand if you have no idea what a DAO is. Oh my God, everybody knows a DAO? No. Anuj? <laughs> a little bit? OK. So um, so first, so I, uh, as I mentioned, it stands for Decentralized Autonomous uh, Organizations. And uh, it is a concept that um, um, pretty much appeared uh, around um, I would say like 2015, 16, uh, and the first infamous uh, DAO um, uh, to um, have sort of a catastrophe uh, was called the DAO, uh, like very simply, uh, and uh, and it was, I believe, uh, I mean, it was created in uh, in 2016, um, but uh, infamously had. Uh, a big uh, attack uh, on the DAO um, and access like a lot of funds that were held by the DAO. Uh, um, I think it was around like 4 million ETH at the time, which is not as much as now, but uh, was still a lot of money accessed. And I don't know if anybody remembers what it was really uh, created for, but, um, and Leon uh, uh, from the foundation can give us uh, a few more details on on DAOs uh, specifically, but I do think it was like to automate decisions um, and facilitate uh, cryptocurrency transactions. But I think um, uh, if we want to start with a, a little uh, attempt to define a DAO, that would really help uh, everybody. And uh, the goal to talk about DAOs is also to um, to see the use cases uh, that have been done with DAOs uh, since uh, 2016. And uh, and then um, like see opportunities uh, in different areas uh, and different projects um, that are being worked on and uh, and potentially also limitations because uh, DAOs are not gonna you know fix the world but they can help. Um, so Leon, I don't know if that's um, something you feel comfortable uh, just um, getting an attempt at uh, at defining DAOs or if anybody else uh, wants to jump in. Yeah, um, I'd be happy to. Thanks, Jenny. Um, I, I mean, if, I think essentially what a DAO is to me is it's just a bunch of code on, on this um, immutable uh, decentralized network. So a bunch of computers that share uh, some power over, you know, the the governance of the of the network, like the blockchain, like Ethereum, and. And then you have a bunch of code that describes or uh, executes uh, or, or creates a membership organization that, that can be a membership organization with all uh, sorts of rules. And I think the most dominant uh, type of DAO in Ethereum at the moment is called the Moloch DAO, which is a particular standard uh, of um, yeah, actually just a plutocratic uh, organization standard where each of its members has some shares like in a capitalist um, company and 
and one share is one vote and collective decisions about yeah all, all kinds of things either updating some application in this network or moving some funds that are shared in this organization but there is some um, democratic progress so to say and then some people have been working on uh, DAOs that use for instance quadratic voting so that one share is one voice credit in quadratic votes i'll just show this um so let's uh, let's uh, yeah like i think i think that's uh, that's too advanced already leon Let, let's uh, let's take a step back because i think this is like quite uh, i mean uh, something very exciting is uh, is to uh, actually use um, um like the dao like governance structure and add it like uh, other concepts like radical exchange concepts like quadratic voting um but i'm wondering matt if you want to say a bit more about like um how uh, DAOs are like helping governance uh, or any other thoughts, um, like basic thoughts uh, about DAOs. I know it's really hard to like actually get basic with, um, a, you know, complex um, um, concept. I mean, I think the way I look at it is that I think DAOs are a, a really, really powerful uh, way of making, of essentially setting up decentralized ways of making decisions about where money is going so they're kind of, you know and that's kind of mostly what they've been used to do so far is to make decisions about money goes here and money goes there and to do that in a decentralized way um this is that's obviously really 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 powerful um I, and i i think that one of the challenges uh so far for you know the from the kind of radical exchange perspective with DAOs is that Nobody's really figured out how to do them. Nobody's really figured out. How to, I mean, there's people working on it and there's progress, but I think that we, the, the nut has not been fully cracked in terms of how to make these decisions, these decentralized decisions in a non-plutocratic way. Um, and um, uh, in order to, you know, basically one of the big missing pieces in order to m allow these organizations to make decisions on a non-plutocratic basis is is a is an identity layer that allows us that allows the DAO to sort of know that each voter is like an in, a real human who doesn't have multiple accounts. Um, and uh, um, but you know there's interesting progress being made in terms of being able to to formalize like unique individual human identity uh in in the in the blockchain space and 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 elsewhere and so uh there's a lot of interesting work that probably will be done over the next few years in terms of setting up you know democratic non-plutocratic governance systems for DAOs. i mean and i think this is this is um this is obviously something that is interesting and something that this community should be um uh, should be kind of paying attention to trying to steer these efforts in the right direction, trying to, trying to, um, you know, tracking them and, and helping. Yeah. Has there been any, uh, also like one limitation is that like most of the governance of the voting, um, uh, in DAOs have been done with, uh, tokens. So really limited to, um, the crypto community, uh, um, you know, we know how to, um, to have tokens and, and use tokens for reputation and, and so on and so forth. I think it goes back to like Kimberly uh, put the comment like, and Kimberly, if you have uh, other things like you were asking, like have employee owned businesses not cracked the nut um, because that's, um, that's really like to broaden the use of the uses of, uh, of DAOs as well, like it's a problem. How do you keep so, them from turning into cults? How to keep DAOs from turning into cults? That's a uh, or, or or like or like any group really. Like there's the once you have like we need this thing, we need to make decisions. People have to care enough, or else it'll just turn into um, we make decisions all the time when we buy stuff, right? Because we care about like eating. But if it's not about our day to day lives, then you have to care about it, and then people. Are very cult-like about their sports teams but that's fine but once you start getting cult-like about who runs your water then things start to get a little weird yeah i mean i i, th I think that's an interesting question i think that the um 
you can look at sort of social organizations on the one hand, and then you can look at, at sort of more like formally governed organizations on the other hand. I actually think when I think about this sort of dynamics of, of cults and so on, I actually think that, that where, usually where that kind of problem emerges is in like informal structures, the structures that don't have like formal governance programs. Obviously, these there's that's not always true, um, but um, for, I don't know. There, there's a lot to read about that. Like I would I would I would recommend like reading um, reading like uh, there's a a um, a scholar named Fred Turner who has done really really interesting work about the sort of history of of Silicon Valley and history of the computing culture um, that that kind of talks about how these sort of radically, radically informal um, systems of governance that emerged like in California in the 60s and 70s lent themselves basically to cult style dynamics. Um, the, uh, I, when I think of like DAOs, I am not so much worried about that kind of like, like cultural that sort of like, you know, the, the culture of them going wrong because they don't always have cultures, you know, sometimes they're just like, they're just like formal decision, you know, authority systems in which, in which decisions are made. So it's like, I think a closer comparison would almost be like a public corporation or something like that. Can I give um, an example? Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I want to lower my cholesterol. So in order to do that, I have to either be on some sort of medication, stop eating most foods or exercise. So I chose exercise. In order to make myself exercise, I, I use a service called BeMinder in which if I don't make my goal number of spe steps, it charges me money. It's very motivational. And you know my end goal is to do the steps. So like once you sign up to this thing, my whole life gets rearranged because I must do it. It turns into a religion, which I'm fine with. Um, but it's just so simple, like once, I'm, I don't really interact with anybody else that uses BeMinder. So it's not like, it's more like a religion now than a cult, but it's still like, there's still, we're all humans. It's sort of hard to separate the things that we do to make our systems work from things like religions or whatever it's you also, it's, it's, it's also a, 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 like an incentive uh, uh, issue, right? Like this is kind of where, um, like governance and 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 I mean DAOs have struggled because they don't have like a um, a yes. rule sometimes like to, uh, um, to or, push people to vote so um, or to do anything like engage with it yeah. at all and a lot of like I would push back on the informal things sorry I'll, I'll in that say that a lot of cults and small religions do have a lot of formality that's the whole yeah. appeal is because uh, people right. want that in their lives. Sorry, we just have to uh, raise hands uh, and um, uh, you've been really well on the phone uh, if, you, uh, if you have a question. Yes, thanks. This is Aliza on the phone in Ohio. Um, I might suggest the term constituency wear. Uh, and, and connecting perhaps to Fred Turner, I don't know if he referred to the old metaphors on the internet of the cathedral and the bazaar. I would suggest, in addition to those two, Another analogy, and that is a school of classrooms, where each classroom is a constituency within the school. And we can easily represent visually and online this set of constituencies of our whole world, our whole school. And so I'm curious if this has been thought about. I also have two quick questions as to whether it always means blockchain or you can have DAOs without using blockchain. And again, whether it's sort of focused just on individuals or more on constituencies. Good question. I haven't uh, encountered a DAO outside of blockchain, but does anybody have any other insights? There's some work out of New Zealand that is doing something similar with, um, but I think a blockchain solution would have been better for them. I think there are other I, th I think people have sort of, um, because blockchain has been so prominent recently, sort of conflated decentralization with, uh, with, with blockchain. And um, if you look at like early 
BitTorrent and, and peer-to-peer -peer systems, there are ways of decentralizing authority and power with different um, sort of data architectures and security and decentralization without actually doing it in a formal blockchain structure. But blockchain right now is the kind of more sort of evolved um, version, you, you might say, of, of that technology. Kimberly, you had so the, your head. Connect with the water, like water districts or school districts, geographic constituencies. I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? I, uh, I overlapped with you. I was, I was just adding on to clarify what I meant by constituency, since I realized I'd only spoken about it at the metaphorical level of a school building with many classrooms. I'm thinking that for actually making decisions in real life that involve money and utilities like water in Florida or anywhere, that we could have a system in which we can represent ourselves through our constituencies, through the street we live on, through the school district we live on, to make decisions about things as important as water. And you don't mean like the regular democratic process that we have right now? I'm saying either in conjunction with or on top of simultaneously. Because right now our democratic process really isn't giving us enough constituency uh, participation uh, compared to the amount that's available online. That, that's available through computer capacities. Our society has the computer capacity to be super democratic um, and our government systems just haven't quite adopted that. Well, I think isn't, I mean, I live in a, like a lot of people say it's a republic. They want the deliberative, the, the discussion body to make decisions. So like the balance between like um, democracy and republic is leaning too far onto the republic side. Is that, that that's what you're saying? Um, a little bit that fits in, but my major point that I'm trying to raise in all discussions is that we have the direct ability to text from our phones directly into just say our school district. We can say, you know, whether we're going to be absent or present or what we want for lunch you know, mushroom versus pepperoni pizza. Pre-internet, we were actually really clear on this and we expected to have the total map, to have the total attendance count, the lunch preference count. And we can do that at the city level, at the nation level, at the global level. We have the Google capacity to handle the data, but we haven't set up the social structure to, to match. Kimberly, you've had your hand up. Yeah, um, that's a, like a very exciting point to come in. Preach. I'm also like super, super excited about, you know, the possibility of um, at least on some things, you know, more more liquid democracy and direct polling of constituents. Um, but right, you know, balancing that with uh, the need for, you know, what I see is the need for the, the republic structure on, you know, decisions where we probably want to have full time people processing lots of, of information. Um, but um, I'm, I'm actually curious to go back to, I appreciate um, Fanny, you bringing up my, my comment um, and perhaps I, I missed a, a, a nod to speak up then. I was distracted by some exciting private chats, um, but right, curious to go back to, so like employee owned businesses, if there are specific ways, Matt, that you see those as um, like falling short uh, of, you know, cracking the nut, uh, you know, taking, taking out of, uh, you know, plutocracy. Not, a, not at all. I don't, I think those employee owned businesses are, are, are great. What I meant by cracking the nut was specifically in the context of DAOs. So like, I wouldn't, I would, I employee owned businesses just as a matter of definition to me are a different thing than DAOs. So I think, you know, D DAOs have, have had trouble, uh, like arriving at, you know, building non-plutocratic forms of, of governance, although they're now getting there, but employee-owned co-ops have, have been there for a long time. Does that make sense? Um, so I didn't mean to, didn't mean to cast any aspersions at all on, on like um, uh, these kinds of, you know, community governance systems. It's just that they're not, they're different from DAOs, at least in the way right. I use the word. 
Yeah. And uh, I mean, no offense taken. I, I think it's always good to like be aware of how something could be improved. I, get, I was just curious whether those employee owned business models, um, if, if they already exist and are considered to be working, you know, why not like translate them over to DAOs? Um, and maybe like this brings up a, a question for me about what DAOs are that I don't know, Matt or Leon or anyone could answer um, of like, it, so you know, beyond being is is kind of like the key definition that they're built and kind of like blockchain is integral or is there like something else to be said about what like the goal of a DAO is? Um, well, so, you know, a, at least the way I'm using, I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, a Graven or anyone else who has their hand up can sort of might be able to jump in here and help, help clarify. But, you know, when I think of it, when I use the word DAO, I'm, pretty much 99% of the time talking about blockchain based decision bodies that are fully decentralized. Um, so, you know, like an employee owned business is, is, uh, is not that right. I mean, there, an employee owned business, there's like a, there's a meeting with a board and people sitting around voting, calling in their votes. Everyone knows who everyone else is. Uh, whereas on a, in, a, in most DAOs, people are interacting through anonymous blockchain addresses um, and voting through, uh, voting through tokens, which means that they're not actually, the, the way that they're interacting is not, they're not coming through the lens of their human identity. They're not saying, I'm Matt, uh, you're Kimberly, you're Fanny. Uh, and these are our votes. They're saying, I'm a anonymous blockchain address. This is how many relevant tokens I have. And here's what I want. So it's like, they're, um, as, a, as a consequence, you, uh, you can't have the same kind of conversations and, uh, and you can't have the same kind of formal, uh, formal voting structures that give everybody like an equal voice. Um, and I'm, I'm sure. And, and I think, like, yeah. I mean, yeah, Graven or uh, or uh, or Leon, if you uh, if you if you can add some light. And I think then, uh, well, at the same time, uh, I think it would be interesting to go to use cases and examples uh, because um, you know it it always gives it some um, um, you know more colors and 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 a bit more concrete uh, examples. And I do know we have a few people working on 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 them on the call today. Yeah, I was just going to add, I think Matt and Kimberly both kind of nailed it, but I'd, I'd maybe challenge a little bit with what Matt said about it having to just be anonymous or pseudonymous and Kimberly's point of why not translate an employee owned setup to a DAO. I think, I, I think of DAOs as more of a, a tool set for organizing, a digitally native tool set for organizing and making decisions. And that doesn't say anything about what the structure is. It's just a, a new way of enacting your goals or enacting the structure that you want. So it's all, it's super flexible. It's not a legal structure yet, except in Wyoming now they're, they're adding some stuff. And I think, uh, I'm not Delaware, but Vermont. But um, so like, it's, it's kind of like asking a question of like, what's an LLC for? What, what's a, a C Corp for? Well, it could be a million different things and they can all have different, um, operating agreements and bylaws and all those sorts of things. And so a DAO is really just a digitally native version of that. And it opens up new use cases where you don't have to know people to be able to cooperate. That's a really interesting thing. But you could also do interesting things, more efficient things with the people that you do know and do have a connection with. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Grimm. That's an important uh, um, I um, and I know it's like I think so going to uh, more like use cases. Um, um, so they've been obviously in like very blockchain related project like use the use of uh, uh, of uh, of DAOs. Um, they've been uh, use cases that we will go through uh, on the uh, cultural uh, side, but uh, I think more timely and importantly, there are questions about how to use DAOs for um, uh, things like relief, uh, relief funds. And, and I know Anoush, you've been, uh, you've been 
um, like thinking about it, and uh, and 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 I'm wondering if uh, if you can uh, give us some details about your thought process and uh, and uh, and see if uh, if we can contribute any help. Yeah, sure. Um, so I would we hear you are very far away. I don't know if you can increase the sound. Is this better? A little bit. You're still very quiet. Is it possible that you're far from your How microphone about, or something? How about now? Yeah. Much better. Scream, yeah. scream across the room. <laughs> no, my, my mic, like if I turn it up too much, it starts to like misbehave. So I'm being very cautious uh, yeah. with that. No, you're good. You're good. We can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so as a bit of background, um, I'm actually like one of the people, like one of the main people active in the original Mall of Dow these days. So um, like uh, that's just one of the like uh, like I work at the Ethereum Foundation and the Ethereum Foundation gave a bunch of funds to Molibdao to invest in the Ethereum ecosystem. So um, like Molibdao is like a practical um, DAO that I have experience with. One that is not very well designed, um, but that has it's not too bad either. I mean it works and it has it has not had any catastrophes, but it, it has has it had its problems where um, like there's not that much incentivization to pay contributors for um, you know, keeping the DAO going and stuff. Like it was the first cool one, so everyone was really excited and self-motivated at first, but then it kind of fizzled out. So, um, but more interestingly, um, like I'm in India and India is going through a really um, like difficult time right now in terms of COVID. And uh, accidentally we have found ourselves in a in a situation where um, we can deploy a DAO and we kind of like should deploy a DAO um, without having any plans to do so beforehand. So um, like how that happened is because um, like one of the people from India, despite having like really bad um, uh, regulation, regulatory structures here, um, one of the like prominent crypto people called Sandeep from the Polygon project, he sort of put himself on the line and said, hey, I will um, I will put my crypto address here so that the crypto community can don donate to COVID relief in India. And um, I will figure out the legal structure and all of and be sh like um, guarantee the transparency and all of those things. And uh, he, he got a lot of funding, like there has been more than three million in funding from the whole crypto ecosystem so far with Vitalik donating around 600k himself and Balaji Srinivasan donating 200k and a lot of prominent Silicon Valley and crypto people donating really big amounts and like this is basically all of them all of the people donated to Sandeep so there's actually no DAO in place right now but I have convinced him to sort of give up the control to a DAO and he's he is willing to do that and so um, because that way first of all he does not have to you know um, always be, be in the line of fire when it comes to how did you use the funds and prove your transparency and stuff. And also, like, there are a lot of really interesting ideas in the DAO space where we can, um, you know, set a precedent for relief work to be done in the future. So, um, um, so to describe it more, um, basically, so we have a lot of funders, right? And we have people who have donated all these amounts. So, um, and the fun thing is that this is retrospective. So none of them knew that they would be part of a DAO where they can sort of attack by sending in small amounts and gain, gaining votes just for like a, a bit of money just to attack the system. So they, don't, they didn't even know that this was going to happen. So that is an even better opportunity to set up, sort of set up an intentional, I don't know if it's unintentional, but um, to set up a DAO where people did not expect one and uh, sort of, you know, navigate around the problems of some attacks. So what we are thinking right now is basically how to involve some of the major people who have funded um, in the process of where the funds go. So like this is um, like this is a place where the funds weren't supposed to be governed by us, but we are using the DAO more for voting and for transparency and also for electing people who will, you know, um, give us advice on where the funds should go. Like every every of those people, like each of those people are quite well connected 
and uh, they might have no really good relief experts while Sandeep might not and a lot of us might not who are in this community these days like we are not relief expert people we are crypto people who want to do something on the DAO uh, on the COVID uh, on the COVID problem and, and in COVID relief um, but these people are well connected and they might know really good people so they might be able to nominate people so, so that's sort of an application of DAOs which does not involve money but rather the privilege or the right to vote and being able to influence how an organization functions without necessarily being involved in where the money is going. So um, like, so a few ideas that we are considering in this DAO is, um, first of all, um, like creating a 50-50 pool. So 50% of the votes can belong to the funders and 50% can belong to the community members. So that neither has like too much of a say and still like both parties who are like really involved and really responsible for these things um, do get to make a difference. So that's one of the ideas. And like the number of members in each pool can be arbitrary because the total just has to be 50% from each side. So that's one of the ideas. So I'm going to move from top to down. Okay. So we have these funders. They both get um, like 50% of the pool each. Um, the next thing they can do is sort of nominate one person to give advice on where these funds should go. Um, one thing they can do. So we are a relief DAO, and like I am only talking about it in a non-general perspective of what has happened and how we plan to use it. So um, what we are doing is since this is a, this is a relief DAO where funds are supposed to go towards COVID relief, especially when no one expected them to be done in a DAO manner. What we are doing is not setting up a consensus or a approval process, but rather a veto process. So what we will be doing is, you know, putting up um, like things to vote but like we will say that hey we are going to buy this much worth of oxygen tanks because they're in shortage and we will buy it from this person and this is where the funds will go and if anyone sees that there's a problem with that they can you know vote against it but since this is relief work we don't want to sort of put a put a barrier in front of votes and you know um, we, we don't want to create a situation where relief work is not happening because people don't want to participate um, or you know those, those sort of things or, and also we don't want to create a burden for these people because they didn't choose to be part of a DAO but suddenly they're having to vote all the time so for all that we are using a veto system so that's the second part of it where they're directly involved in the funding but they don't have to necessarily govern it but rather they have the power to veto it so those are some of the ideas that we've been thinking about um yeah and uh, like my purpose for joining this call like when i saw that the topic is DAO, I, I was really excited because like I'm hands on and like working 25 hours a day on this COVID relief problem. So I wanted to. Um, sorry. Yeah, no, I thanks. To, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, sorry, and, I know. Uh, <laughs> like, think about this collectively. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you so much. And, uh, and I think this, um, this is a very um fundamental uh question like and uh and i'm wondering if people on the call have other example of relief DAOs or uh, have uh thoughts about using a DAO for uh, relief funds uh i'm uh i just wanted to open the floor to uh before we go into the details but i think this is um kind of a first question uh, that might help also to to see good like best practices or uh, or anything like that. Anybody has any comment or it's uh, it's too bad that if um, I will connect you Anush with uh, with Grace uh, 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 who is uh, unable to join uh, today because. Um, Grace has been like part of the common stack and, and a lot of like DGOV, uh, Decentralized Governance uh, Foundation. And uh, she just texted me this morning. She's like, I have a lot of concerns using a DAO, but that was it uh, for relief funds. So, um, so that's definitely a discussion that uh, I, I believe needs to, um, you know, like I would like you to hear what she has to say as well. Um, but I do want to give the floor to people on the call as well. Don't be shy. I'll just say, I think there's two really interesting ideas there, Anuj. One is this idea of sort of a, re a retroactive DAO. So in other words, you kind of solve the identity problem by uh, importing it from the past. You know, the, the limitation of the, 
uh, of that, I, I guess, is that if, if you want to evolve to include new members going forward, then you can't you can't use that system to, to address the identity problem. The other the other um, uh, um, or at least if you want to evolve going forward, then using that kind of a system, then you're you're actually empowering you know the creator of the DAO in a sense to to decide on the membership. Which can can work, but it's just it's a very interesting idea. The uh, um, the other interesting idea I think is uh, is using using DAOs as as a forum just for a just for a veto um, instead of uh, instead of loading the entire process of governance into them. It's another so there's there's I think there are lots of uh, yeah really interesting kinds of replicatable patterns in in that, and uh, I'm I'm really looking you know. Wishing you the best and and uh, looking forward to learning some lessons from your work. Yeah, I have a question for you, Anuj. Actually, on um, uh, because as uh, we all know, the D for DAO is uh, decentralized. But um, if you're using a veto system, like how or who uh, is deciding actually, like on the uh, actions, which, as you said, like cannot be delayed, like it's in, like buying uh, oxygen uh, there, but like who is actually making these decisions, and you know, like how do you give that authority uh, in a supposedly like decentralized uh, organization? Sure. Um, so that's kind of what I meant by all of the people who funded, um, nominating people who will find organizations that we are going to fund. So these will sort of all be people who will have a say in picking organizations. And then within this community, like let's say there are five people who are fun, who are the funders, and then they pick a team of five who can suggest that these are the organizations that are getting funded on the ground. And out of these five nominees, um, uh, whichever organization gets three votes um, is, is the one which is likely to get funded. So we are sort of crowdsourcing intelligence on what which organizations are best to fund without letting any of the nominees, you know, introduce is corruption or a single point of attack and still um, so, so that's where the organizations come from and then um, then also there's the veto um, thing so we are trying to like we have a local problem we are, we are also thinking about how to generalize it and come up with relief DAOs as a thing in general so I think I mean, and I'm just being mindful of the time because I think that's uh, that's I mean, obviously, like a very timely and very important subject. Um, uh, if Anuj, like if you can put your um, any contact that people can reach uh, out to you in in the chat, and uh, and I do want to uh, create um, uh, a Telegram uh, group that I will share with uh, all of you uh, and with Grace uh, as well. Um, so that like uh, we can uh, continue the discussion. But uh, thanks a lot for um, uh, presenting the uh, the project. Um, another use case that I wanted to touch upon uh, is uh, the use of DAOs uh, in uh, cultural uh, communities. And uh, we don't have rules from further field, uh, but Jen, maybe you can, uh, if you know a little bit about the art world uh, DAO uh, that they have put together, um, they did do um, um, like use DAOs to uh, actually um, um, fund uh, exhibitions and uh, and uh, artist uh, commissions to uh, really put together a network of resources and um, like skills, supports, and funding. Um, for rethinking a, a little bit how the uh, funding works uh, in uh, cultural institutions. There's another uh, example of uh, that, which was called the Trojan DAO. Uh, and I'm not sure if they're active anymore, but like a year or two ago, uh, it was before COVID, it was really like during the uh, economic crisis in uh, Greece, uh, artists uh, just um, got themselves to, like, together like, um, and organized themselves uh, to uh, find uh, sponsors and uh, funding because one thing they knew was that the government like, of Greece was not going to support artistic creation and especially digital uh, art uh, creation. So they did organize themselves uh, as and to support uh, artists and that was mostly uh, also used to uh, manage the funds and uh, and decide on the 
artist grants uh, to artists to um, to support uh, with uh, grants. Um, then I don't know if you have more insights on that was in. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, but I can put in the chat um, yeah. the links to that. But I think yeah. you had you covered as much a, as I know. <laughs> I do have a few uh, a few links as well. Uh, but I would love to hear from uh, Theo uh, uh, with uh, working on uh, a few things related to uh, to the subject and uh, and to um, radical exchange concepts. So it's uh, if I can give three keywords, I would say it's uh, uh, it's art, it's NFT, it's uh, like radical and it's a DAO, so it's four keywords, <laughs> but um, there's quite an amazing project that uh, you guys are putting together as like radical NFTs and uh, and I believe you're organized as a DAO, so would love to hear directly from you um, uh, what you guys are working on. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you summarized it uh, quite well. So right now we are focused on building the project and of course we will uh, move to DAO system to reward contributors and make them participate. The idea is simple. Um, the creator economy in which we believe is not possible currently because creators have only like old fashioned financial system. They can sell their creation for upfront payment, but then they don't have like long term value on top of their creation. At best, they can have like um, royalties, but it's irregular in time. You don't know when you will be paid and in amount, you don't know which amount. So this is really risky for a creator and this is not efficient at all. We think creators need like financial security to break things, innovate, create. And we are pretty sure that uh, Arbiter is a solution to that. We build for developers. This is our main focus because we don't know exactly what's the, the breaking point of our badger, how it's going to be used. There are so many use cases. Uh, we have discussed many there. Uh, and I think, and we think that there's a lot of stuff to do. So we provide the layer base of the our badger economy, kind of. So a protocol that's easy for developers to build on top of with a lot of documentation, et cetera, et cetera. And also like pre-made options for the way you want to structure your Arbiter system. And a very good platform, UX, on which their user can manage their radical. So pay the patronage, take what you have earned, that kind of things. And we are like pressured that Arbiter need a layer base on which builders can iterate and give freedom to people. Thank you, uh, thank you, Theo. I think this is a uh, uh, something that mixes a, a lot of con concepts uh, together, and it's uh, it's always you know like interesting to see um, like you know concepts being put together to do something way more powerful. And I think uh, I don't know if uh, people on the call are familiar with um, an early project uh, that was presented at the first Radical Exchange uh, conference uh, by Simon de la Rouvière, uh, which was called the artwork that is always on sale. And this was uh, a digital artwork that was uh, actually using uh, salsa and the Hardberger tax uh, to um, have like owners uh, pay a fee to actually retain a possession of the uh, artwork and uh, which fee like would uh, actually be paid to, uh, to the creator. So I'm very excited to see uh, more uh, iteration on, uh, on this uh, and Stefan, I, I, I don't know if there's anything you want to add uh, to what Theo uh, presented. Yeah, I think that it was short and sweet. Uh, he described all the all the main things. Uh, you can check our yeah. I, I saw that he sent a link in the in the chat. I don't want to um, take too much of your time. Uh, he he described it quite well. And uh, please uh, stay tuned. One thing to add to conclude. If you have knowledge about Arbiter, you have something you want to build, even in the theory side, a design you are thinking about, please DM us because we need to iterate, try things and see what is really used by people and useful to them. 
So we, we I need just to understood that you said a hamburger with a very French accent. <laughs> yeah, hamburger. No, hamburger, hamburger, not hamburger. Hamburger. I I spent years like trying to define to say it. Yeah. So yeah, basically we we had a few uh, use cases in mind, but we're sticking to the to the general protocol. Uh, so other uh, sort so the community basically can. Uh, just continue uh, to add value to our to the to the protocol. Continue uh, creating their own use cases, and yeah, awesome. that's why we're we're creating for builders. But uh, sure, we can try to integrate ourselves some of some of the use cases if we if we are so if we, we have a nice suggestion from from any of you guys. So yeah, feel yeah. free to 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 think to share an idea thought and so, yeah. I would love to. Uh, I would love to talk more. I've I've been uh, thinking about Har Harburger NFTs. For I I I, I built a little uh, Harburger NFT thing uh, back in 2018. I'll sh I'll show you the link here. Yeah, cool. Um, and uh, I would love to learn more about you know how you're thinking about uh, the structure of the of the taxes and how the transactions will work and. Um, uh, Really excited to see um, to see this project and and yeah, let's connect soon. Um, very nice. So um, just being mindful of the time, uh, Mars, you have your hand up. Uh, I will give you one minute because I need five minutes to uh, uh, to do uh, more announcements and uh, and updates. Um, but go ahead. Sure. Uh, very quickly, the subject of this call, DAOs, is very timely. What is happening right now is the entire transition to digital. There are new laws in different countries, like say in Wyoming, the state in the US, the DAO is now the first class legal citizen. So you can, as a DAO, have access to the government infrastructure. So this is such an amazing time in the history of humanity. Entire countries are going digital. DAOs from just a bunch of dudes on the internet are becoming a real entity. So this is just a, such an amazing time to be alive. I'm so I'm so honored to be here. So thank you. Thank you very no, much. Thanks. Thanks. I think there's uh, so one thing that I do want to do on uh, um, as a follow up is uh, is uh, is more um, of a of a of an article just like so we can include more people as well on the subject and uh, uh, and continue the discussion uh, both with. Uh, you and uh, and other people who could not attend and uh, and probably like a group chat uh, specifically on the uh, India use case. Um, one, do you want to spend the last five minutes with a few uh, updates? Uh, I will. Um, I, I realize that uh, for newcomers, they did not really introduce the team. Uh, and uh, as I, I should have done, um, uh, but uh, we have uh, Jen and uh, Matt, uh, who um, you know are uh, co-directors of uh, the foundation. Uh, Leon was uh, our um, like production and uh, crypto expert and like entrepreneur and technology lead. Uh, Angela uh, was uh, mastering uh, communication and uh, production and chapters. I mean, she's a She's the queen here, and uh, and uh, and Alex uh, was building uh, Radical Exchange Voice and uh, a few other amazing uh, products uh, uh, tools that uh, you'll be able to have access to. Uh, Angela, I'll pass you the mic on a few um, announcements, updates um, uh, to change it up a little bit. Uh, sure. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I need to pull up the agenda that we have. Um, so just a few things, actually. Okay. Um, so there is a new Radical Exchanges episode that we have that just came out. Um, it has Jakob Fagan and Vincent, and it's on data dividends. Um, I can throw it that in the chat right now. I'll, uh, I'll throw the links. Go ahead, make Alan. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, but we do have a job board that um, we are posting on the site. So if you guys are looking for partners or um, opportunities and you'd like to reach out to the uh, Radical Exchange 
community, please share that. We do have a form that you can fill out. Um, we also have a conference coming up in the fall. So if part of a company or a foundation that would like to partner with us, um, please email us. This is a soft ask, it's not a hard ask right now, um, but just like letting everybody know that um, we are, it will be in Taiwan um, and there will be obviously um, a digital experience as well. Um, and then are we gonna also do an RPC voice recap at all? Did we do that? Are we gonna do that? Alex, would you no, like to just, do that? <laughs> I, the only thing with RxC Voice is that we have the beta launch, much, the much anticipated beta launch of RxC Voice coming up. Um, we're gonna start on the 17th of May. Uh, so if you haven't already uh, emailed voice at radicalexchange.org to participate, go ahead and do that now. Um, just shoot us an email at that address. We'll put it in the chat and we'll add you to the initial delegate list for the beta launch. And uh, and we're going to present as well um, uh, more about quadratic voting at uh, consensus uh, on May 26, I believe. Um, so this is going to be a workshop about quadratic voting and about how uh, quadratic voting uh, used with police and other tools uh, actually do make up a radical ex exchange voice. Um, so this is uh, uh, hopefully going to be broadcasted uh, and we'll make sure to share everything. Uh, and, uh, and radical exchange voice for those who are not familiar is a, is a platform that will basically combine a bunch of different sort of democratic decision making tools. Uh, we're going to, we're, we're, we're piloting it essentially uh, in this beta launch as a method of determining some priorities for the Radical Exchange Foundation for the next year from the, from the community. Um, it's a very, it's, it's a really super experimental sort of end-to-end -end system of democratic decision-making um, and uh, it's going, it, but you know, if we can make it work, it's going to be like really cool. And uh, so I uh, hope to have everyone's you know, participation. Uh, email radic voice at radicalexchange.org to, um, to, to participate in this beta and uh, help us, uh, yeah, help us push this, this cool project forward. If you're, if you're interested in what we've been talking about today, uh, like decentralized uh, approaches to decentralized digital democratic governance, then uh, you should definitely participate because this is going to be a great experiment in that area. All right, well, that's a good uh, mic drop, I would say, for uh, for the end. But thanks a lot, uh, everybody, uh, for um, uh, you know making that call all with a, a great uh, a great hour of the month and uh, and for uh, all the great projects uh, presented. So uh, we'll uh, see you around on the metaverse and uh, next month. So thank you very much, everybody, and have a also, good also thank of you to everyone new who came. Thank you so much. Yeah. Tell everybody. <laughs> nice right. to meet you all. Thanks. Bye. Bye.